Hello guys, thank you very much for joining us for another story here at Annie Narrates. Today's story style goes like this. Ex-wife and her new husband sat me down and tell me I need to do this to save their wedding. I laughed in their faces and said no, because she married a loser. In 2022, I crossed paths with my now ex-wife, introduced by a mutual friend from my workplace. At the time, I was 28 years old and she had recently celebrated her 26th birthday. Our connection was instant, and we began dating shortly after. Throughout the initial phases of our relationship, things generally went well. While there were occasional minor warning signs, they seemed manageable, and I didn't give them too much weight. Despite our initial compatibility, our differences became more apparent after we tied the knot. We did it for a year, got engaged, and within four months, we were exchanging vows. The honeymoon phase, typically for newlyweds, was brief for us, fading away around the two-month mark. It became increasingly evident that she sought control over every aspect of our lives. Our activities, music choices, movie and TV selections, and even our meals were dictated solely by her preferences. Shortly before our marriage, I left my previous job due to the overwork and inadequate pay, choosing to join the company where my future wife was employed. Initially, working together was enjoyable, and we became known as the married couple within the company. While I found the experience fun, it quickly became apparent that she didn't share the sentiment. As an extroverted individual, I naturally gravitated towards socializing with coworkers, aiming to create a lively atmosphere for everyone. While my interactions were well received by most, my wife seemed to be the exception. Despite her socializing with other colleagues, she criticized me for trying to engage in conversations when we worked together, deeming it distracting. To appeal to her, I decided to leave my job so that she no longer complained about me working at the same company. I had always wanted to work as a freelancer illustrator, so I decided this would be the perfect chance for me to explore my passion. The transition was a bit financially challenging. I began working half of my usual hours, taking on as many freelance projects as possible. And although I made a decent start, the income was limited. Yet I knew that if I kept working and learning more and more, I would eventually earn pretty well. Our eating habits took a turn next. She consistently leaned towards opting for takeout, preferring to stay in for dinner even when I had purchased groceries for a home-cooked meal. Being the primary chef in our relationship, it seemed she harbored certain envy, leading to infrequent homemade dinners unless she took charge or I had already started cooking upon her arrival. Over time, our dietary choices worsened, and I, having shed over 40 pounds during my college years, saw a reversal in my progress due to our increasingly unhealthy meals. Given my past struggles with weight, maintaining a healthy diet and exercise routine was crucial, yet our poor food choices led me to gain over 15 pounds in just a few months. To my displeasure, she openly commented on my weight gain. Feeling insecure and self-conscious, I decided to invest more time in my workouts and took control of my meals by preparing them for myself while catering separately to her preferences. This, however, became another point of contention and she complained about my reluctance to share meals with her. Succumbing to the pressure, I eventually returned to the standard American diet, compromising my personal dietary goals to align with hers. Fast forwarding a little bit, the situation continued to deteriorate. Criticism became a constant in our interactions, my income, occasional forgetfulness about trivial matters, and even our intimate moments weren't spared. The infrequent sexual encounters we did have were marred by her harsh critiques, often leaving her in a state of anger. Sex became a rare occurrence, happening perhaps once every other month. I found myself deeply self-conscious, feeling that my efforts to please her were consistently falling short despite constantly going above and beyond. Aware of her long-standing struggle with depression, I considered it a possible factor behind her behavior. Consequently, I suggested counseling, a practice I had personally embraced for the past six or seven years. Hoping to alleviate her struggles, I proposed individual therapy, drawing from my positive experiences. Despite expressing previous interest in counseling, she dismissed the idea, insisting that she didn't need it. I also broached the subject of couples counseling, recognizing the strain on our relationship, but each time, she deflected attention onto me. 
asserting that I was the one in need of counseling, not her. Upon reaching the 10-month milestone, a profound shift occurred. She started becoming a mere cold, stern, and frankly heartless individual. Her presence at home dwindled, with her absence stretching from morning until sunset. Despite my efforts, such as surprising her with a dinner at work or checking in to make her day easier, her responses became brief. I assumed her short replies were because of work-related stress, and her demeanor led me to believe that my gestures of love were somehow burdensome to her. Around this time, she began spending more and more time with a coworker and friend named Harry. Residing on the same block as our workplace, his place became the go-to hangout and party spot for fellow employees. Initially, I didn't mind their increased camaraderie, as I trusted them both. However, she started returning home later, siding after work drinks with Harry and other coworkers. On one occasion, she even disregarded our planned dinner with my parents to join him for drinks leaving me in the dark about these outings. As she immersed herself in these drinking sessions with Harry, her time at home dwindled. Consequently, I found myself juggle Consequently, I found myself juggling two part-time jobs while shouldering all domestic responsibilities for our shared household. Cleaning, cooking, laundry, mowing, dishes, home improvement, and shopping. This, alongside caring for our two dogs and two cats, became my full-time commitment. On a night, when she arrived home late, disrupting our plans, she conveyed her struggle with our relationship, asserting that I made her feel isolated and didn't listen enough. In my own shortcomings, I readily accepted responsibility for her feelings and pledged to address the issue. Despite proposing couples counseling to mend our relationship, she adamantly refused. In the following couple of months, there appeared to be an improvement in our situation. She became more present and less easily agitated. At this point, I had essentially stopped prioritizing my own well-being, focusing solely on meeting her every need and desire, despite feeling utterly miserable. It was an exhausting endeavor. During this period, we embarked on a two-week vacation in the UK, which, despite her preference for staying in an Airbnb for a significant portion of the time, went relatively well. However, upon our return, her work hours remain unchanged, and I noticed a shift in her musical preferences toward Harry's taste, something she had never done with my music, which she had always disliked. The turning point occurred in New Year's night. We went out with friends to celebrate, eventually parting ways as I had work the next morning, and she wanted to attend a dance party with our coworkers. I bet her good night, told her to have fun, and said that I would see her when she got home. However, she didn't return that night. The following morning, when I realized she wasn't there, I initially assumed that she had consumed too much alcohol and stayed with a friend, a scenario that had occurred in the past. I attempted to reach her through text but received no response. Checking her location on my phone, it indicated her phone was at the location where she had parked the previous night, coincidentally where we worked, and it seemed she had left her phone in the car. Concerned and unable to, con Concerned and unable to contact her without phone, Concerned and unable to contact her without the phone, I started reaching out to everyone we had been with that night, desperately seeking information on her whereabouts. After hours of anxiety, a coworker finally responded, mentioning that the last time that she saw my wife was at Harry's apartment, waiting for an Uber. Despite offering to share the ride, my wife declined, expressing a desire to sober up and drive home. That was the last known sighting of her. Upon learning this information, my initial panic transformed into anger. Why would she reject a free Uber ride to get home? Moreover, if she was last seen at Harry's apartment, was she still there? Surprisingly, she texted me then, claiming she was home about an hour before my shift ended and that she would see me upon my arrival. This sequence of events left me uneasy. None of it sat well with me. I confronted her when I reached home and, as I predicted, we had a huge fight. She denied at first that she had spent the night at Harry's. Then when I told her about the coworker, she started saying that she was too drunk. Hence, she might have spent the night, but nothing happened. I asked her straight away why she didn't just call me or ask one of her coworkers to give me a call. And she started saying that I was overthinking this and that there was nothing to call me about. I knew something was wrong and that something was wrong, but despite my questions, she continued to lie. 
Then I threatened that if she didn't confess, I would directly talk to Harry about this. This is when my ex-wife spilled the truth. She told me that she had drunk a lot that night and slept with Harry. I tried to stay calm as she continued saying how she did not feel guilty about it and that sleeping with him made her realize that she was unhappy with our marriage. I asked her angrily if that was really the case, then why wasn't she just upfront about it? That's when my ex-wife dropped a bombshell. She was planning on divorcing me and needed some time to sort things out but because I had threatened to go on and talk to Harry, she had been forced to reveal the truth. I was devastated hearing this and felt like I was going to collapse. My worst nightmare had come true. We decided to spend the weekend apart from her, since there was a lot of yelling back and forth. I drove to my parents' place, and in the comforting embrace of my parents, I couldn't hold back the emotions any longer. Tearfully, I began sharing the recent tumult in my marriage. My mom, her face etched with concern, reached out, gently placing a hand on mine, and told me that she had no idea that my ex-wife was capable enough to cheat on me. My dad, his brows furred with a mix of worry and disappointment, chimed in, saying that no one deserved to be treated this way, and that I should start putting my well-being first from here on out. I nodded, acknowledging their understanding of the situation. Mom continued to comfort me, saying that if the relationship was causing me this much pain, then maybe it was the best to leave and prioritize my own happiness. Their words resonated, but I couldn't shake the inner conflict. While a part of me recognized the validity of their advice, another part clung to the hope of salvaging the love we once had. It was a difficult crossroads, where my desire to try and mend things clashed with the harsh reality of her actions and their impact on our marriage. When I met my ex-wife again after that emotionally charged weekend, the tension in the air was palpable. We sat down to talk, and I hoped for some clarity and understanding. However, it quickly became apparent that my wife was resolute in her decision to divorce. She formally requested it with the divorce papers already drawn, which shocked me. I tried to have a conversation with her, to try to comprehend the reasons behind her actions. As we delved into the painful details of their affair, I uncovered the unsettling truth about her involvement in an emotional affair with Harry that had extended over several months. The revelation left me with a mix of sadness betrayal and confusion. In our conversation, I hoped she would acknowledge her mistakes and see that our marriage had broken down for both of us. However, she stubbornly refused to admit any fault. Instead, she surprisingly blamed me, saying that I had pushed her into seeking comfort elsewhere. As she accused me, I couldn't help but feel a deep sadness, and tears came as I grappled with the weight of her words. It was a tough conversation that exposed the deep problems in our relationship and the difficulty of facing the reality of what she had done. After our talk, it became clear that trying to fix our marriage was a lost cause. The weight of her affair, both emotional and physical, and her refusal to admit any fault made it obvious. It seemed she had already gone too far, and there was a glaring lack of respect for what we once had. Coming to terms with the depth of her actions, I faced a harsh reality. Staying in a marriage where trust was shattered and respect was absent felt pointless. I agreed to her asking for a divorce and signed the papers. Over the next couple of months, the divorce process turned out to be a tough road, filled with bitterness and financial strain. My ex-wife demanded financial support from me during the divorce, putting me in a tough spot. To counter her claims, my lawyer and I had to prove her infidelity, specifically her affair with Harry. As we delved into the legal battle, my lawyer worked hard to gather evidence supporting our case. It was emotionally draining, revisiting the details of a marriage that had fallen apart and the impact of her actions on my emotions and our finances. We managed to build a strong case, presenting evidence of her affair and its negative effects on the marriage. Despite her persistent demands for financial support, the court eventually ruled in my favor, attributing fault to her for the affair. This decision spared me from financial ruin, as the court recognized the consequences of her actions on our marriage and consequently the financial settlement. The proceedings, though tumultuous, ultimately brought a sense of justice and relief from the financial burden she sought to impose. After the court ruled in my favor, she confronted me, accusing me of being heartless for not giving her anything. She argued that she had invested a year of her life in our marriage 
and deserve to get paid for the years. I retorted reminding her of her infidelity and questioning why she was fixated on my money. The argument continued, with her attempting to guilt trip me for not providing financial support despite her admission. I stood my ground, emphasizing the fact of her actions on our marriage and reiterating the court's decision. The conversation left a bitter taste, and that was the last I ever saw of her. After the divorce was finally done, a sense of freedom and happiness washed over me. It felt like a weight had been lifted, and I could finally breathe without the constant tension and strife that marked our marriage. The newfound independence brought a wave of relief, and I began to rediscover myself outside of the confines of a troubled relationship. As the days went by, the joy of living on my own terms grew. I started embracing the simple pleasures and pursuing activities that brought me genuine happiness. It was a time of self-discovery, a journey to rebuild and heal from the wounds of a failed marriage. Recognizing the need for emotional support, I eventually decided to seek therapy. It wasn't about dwelling on the past, but rather understanding how the divorce had impacted me and finding healthier ways to navigate life. Therapy became a safe space to express my feelings, process the challenges, and develop coping mechanisms to move forward. Slowly but steadily, the therapeutic process helped me regain a sense of balance and perspective. It became a valuable tool for self-reflection, empowering me to build a more fulfilling and content life beyond the shadows of the past. As weeks turned into several months, and eventually a year passed, life gradually settled into a new routine. The initial tumultuous emotions began to fade, making way for a sense of stability and calm. During this time, I found a full-time job at a great company with a good income. Now that I was a single-person household, I was able to save a lot of money and invest for my future. One day, out of the blue, I received a surprise invitation in my mail from my ex-wife to her wedding. On the card, she had boldly written in pen, Come and watch me marry the man of my dreams. It was apparent that she sent it as a form of revenge, perhaps trying to evoke a reaction from me. Choosing not to attend, I opted to distance myself from the extravagant celebration she had. Through social media, I glimpsed pictures of her wedding shared by our mutual friends. Surrounded by opulence, she appeared genuinely happy. Despite the revengeful undertone of the invitation, I found that I had healed over time. I could genuinely feel happiness for her without any lingering traces of jealousy or resentment. However, last week, there was an unexpected knock on my doorstep, and to my surprise it was my ex-wife standing there with her new husband. I was surprised to see her, because it had been a while since I last saw her. Our last meeting had been in the courthouse when we finally got divorced from each other, so this was an unexpected surprise. My ex-wife asked if they could come in, and she had something to tell me about. I asked her what it was about, as I felt suspicious about her sudden arrival, but she insisted that it was something important. Reluctantly, I let them in. After making themselves comfortable on my sofa, she asked me why I didn't attend her wedding, and if I still hated her. I was taken aback by the question. I informed her that I didn't think my presence was so important for her wedding, and that I no longer had any hate for them. She smiled politely, and started to say how they would have loved to have me there for the event as a lot of guests who knew about our story were looking forward to seeing me support their union. I was starting to get impatient with this conversation as it didn't make any sense, so I asked her directly about what it was that she wanted from me. They both glanced at each other and my ex-wife cleared her throat. Harry looked around awkwardly, waiting for her to speak. My ex-wife started to explain that she and her husband were on the verge of losing their place because they had depleted their entire life savings and had no money to pay rent from the next month. They explained how they had put more than half of their savings into a business idea that Harry was pursuing, which unfortunately didn't pan out, and the rest of the savings had been used for their lavish wedding. According to them, their parents were unable to help since they had already covered all the costs of their honeymoon where they had traveled to several countries. They had even asked some of their friends to donate to their GoFund, yet they still didn't have enough. Out of curiosity, I inquired about their jobs, already aware that my ex-wife had a modest salary, but I expected her new husband to be earning well. That's when Harry chimed in, sharing that he had left his job last year since he thought that the investment in the business idea would pan out and they would become successful. With the IT scenario currently, 
It was difficult for him to find a job so fast while my ex-wife's salary wasn't enough to keep them afloat. Apart from rent, they had to pay for other utility bills and food, so they were struggling and had no way out. My ex-wife then suggested that, given my current financial situation, I should generously offer to pay their housing for at least the next few months as a wedding gift to them. I stared at her for a second and couldn't help but burst into laughter. She looked at me offended and asked why I was laughing at her. I told her that she sounded really ridiculous and flatly refused to take responsibility for their financial mismanagement. I made it clear that I wouldn't be contributing to their situation, especially given that it was her decision to cheat on me with this man. No, I said, looking directly into her eyes. I won't be bailing you out. You married the man of your dreams, who turned out to be a loser, so it's not my responsibility to fix your mess. Harry stared at me angrily, but it wasn't like he could do something at my remark. After all, they both were here to beg me for money. In response to my refusal, my ex-wife grew increasingly agitated, insisting that I should consider our past and help them out. However, this only intensified my laughter, as I found her plea both audacious and absurd. Harry chimed in, saying that it was only a matter of a few months, and with what he had heard from my ex-wife, I could very well afford it now. I simply dismissed Harry's comment with a smile, maintaining my stance. The audacity of the request, coupled with the assumption that my financial situation was open for exploitation, left me more amused than annoyed. My ex-wife continued her appeal, saying that if I didn't save them from this predicament, I could very well affect their marriage as well as their life. They had nowhere else to go, and life was going to be hard for them. She begged me to help them this one time. However, I remained steadfast, unwilling to succumb to emotional manipulation, telling her that saving their marriage was their own responsibility, and they should have thought about that before spending all their savings and not having enough money to pay for rent. I suggested exploring alternative solutions or seeking assistance from other sources. Her husband, clearly disgruntled by my refusal, rose abruptly. It was evident that my ex-wife and her husband were not accustomed to facing the repercussions of their decisions, and my refusal seemed to baffle them. He declared that they should leave, dismissing me as a heartless misser. As they stormed out, my ex-wife continued her tirade, casting blame and accusations in my direction, but I remained calm throughout. Following this encounter, her parents have reached out to me ever since, attempting to guilt me into helping. Despite their pleas and warnings that she might end up on the streets, I stood firm in my decision recognizing that it wasn't my responsibility to bail them out of the consequences of their own choices. Thank you everyone for your kind words. I am as shocked as everyone by my ex-wife's entitlement. After her unexpected visit, I thought about it. It was clear she still felt entitled even after our messy divorce. This makes me even more glad that we never had any children together, otherwise I might have been stuck with her forever. To everyone asking why my ex-wife would come and ask me for help, well, desperate times call for desperate actions. I am sure this was her idea and not the new husband. I am sure no self-respecting man would have come and asked his wife's ex-husband for help, but I guess my ex-wife must have convinced him thinking that I would be able to help them. She probably thought that she might be able to manipulate me. The truth is, if she hadn't cheated on me, I would have definitely helped. But knowing what I know about her, there is no chance in hell that I'm going to let her borrow my money for rent. I am planning on talking to her parents soon, so they stop pestering me about helping their daughter. As I promised, I am back with an important update. I did talk to her parents after taking advice from everyone in the comment section, as I wanted to be prepared before calling them. I called my ex-wife's parents last weekend to firmly ask them to stop contacting me and blame me for their daughter's predicament. My ex-wife's mother, let's call her Jess, started to yell at me that she had always thought of me as her son, and this is how I was repaying her now. Ignoring Jess's raised voice, I calmly addressed her accusations. If you truly consider me your son, I said, you should have stepped in when your daughter's actions threatened our marriage. It's ironic that your concern surfaces now, after all that has happened. My ex-wife's father, let's call him Dan, tried to interject saying that I never gave her a wedding gift anyway 
so this would be the perfect chance to give her something useful. He continued saying that I shouldn't blame them for what happened during my marriage with my ex-wife and that I should do this good deed for the sake of our past. I scoffed at the comment. I took a deep breath, maintaining my composure and trying not to yell back at them. You both are her parents, so instead of begging me to pay her rent, help your own daughter. The solution is not financial aid for me. I won't be manipulated into fixing the mess they've created and I want you both to stop contacting me. I do not want to be bothered about this further, otherwise I will pursue this legally. Hearing this, Jess and Dan were taken aback by my resolute stance. The tension lingered, but I stood my ground, making it clear that emotional blackmail wouldn't sway my decision. I disconnected the call and blocked them so hopefully they won't be able to contact me further. It has been several months since my last update. I know a lot of you wanted me to give you an update but I have been busy with work and I recently went on a small trip with my friends. Now coming on to the update without any further delay. I have heard from the grapevine that my ex-wife and Harry did end up moving back in with her parents since Harry's parents live in another state. Harry still doesn't have a job and I am not sure if he's still searching or depending on my ex-wife to pay all their bills. Honestly, I do feel a little bad for them because she clearly married Harry thinking that she was going to give her a better life than me yet her life changed for the worse. As for myself, I've gone out on a couple of dates but I'm not dating anyone serious yet. I mostly spend time with my friends and our recent trip has been very relaxing. My therapy journey had continued. It has become a valuable tool for self-reflection and personal growth. While I may not have all the answers yet, the therapeutic process is guiding me toward a place of balance and resilience. As I move forward, I appreciate the simplicity of spending time with those who genuinely care about me. Alright guys, that was it for today's story. Thank you very much for listening. Go ahead and smash that like button for me and subscribe for more stories. Thanks again and we will be seeing you in the next one.